Hello and welcome to Alpe d'Huez, the famous home of Mega Avalanche. As you already know, the Mega course is wild and I just rode it for the first time. I'm here to give you a course breakdown. I broke it down into five different sections, so let's get into it. Racers will take a series of gondolas and cable cars to reach the summit of Peak Blanc at a whopping 3,300 meters of elevation. From there, they'll descend all the way down to 700 20 meters into the valley below. We are at the top of Alpe d'Huez, home of the Mega Avalanche, where you're about to do a full run. That's like 8,000 feet of vertical elevation drop, maybe even more. This is gonna be crazy. Let's go get it. As mentioned, I've broken the course up into five sections. The slippery snow, the high alpine gnar, the pedaly meadows, the steep pines, and lastly, and finally, the forest of Armpump. To start things off, there's the Mega Avalanche's claim to fame, the snow. Due to my inexperience, I arrived at the top at about one o'clock in the afternoon, and that's after the snow had been baking in the sun all day long. So needless to say, it was essentially impossible to ride because my front wheels was sinking almost rotor deep into the snow. It was brutal. I was doing my best to manage it, but also seeking out the rocks whenever I could. Hopefully racers will have better conditions earlier in the day, making the snow more manageable to stay on top of instead of sinking in without control. Once you survive the snow on race day with hundreds of other people around you, you'll begin the relentlessly rocky high alpine section. This might be my personal favorite in the area that I was most excited to ride. Racers, study the course well because line choices are plentiful. And remember, just because you're dead set on the line during practice, it doesn't mean you're gonna be able to hit that in your race because you don't know if other riders are gonna be blocking your original path that you intended to hit. So, you've survived the high alpine gnar, but did you remember to pack your fitness? Because a key component to the mega avalanche is climbing, and there's a fair amount of it. It reminded me of the whole enchilada in Moab, famous for its massive descent with the mountains all the way down to the desert floor. Everyone raves about the experience, but what they always forget to mention is the climbing. Racers, I hope you're prepared, especially because the air is a heck of a lot thinner up there at the top, and as you're making your way down, you're still way up there, and that's where most of the climbing is. These climbs would really start to add up throughout the race. Punchy, hard, at high elevation. Look at that waterfall. Oh my gosh. What they don't tell you about Mega Avalanche there's a lot more climbing than people ever talk about. Whew. Now that the legs and lungs are burning, we'll begin a fast and flowy descent within the meadows. Cornering skills and confidence are important here. The berms are well shaped and there's a few key technical turns that'll keep you on your toes. Depending on the weather conditions that you experience during the race, you may get to see some very beautiful cloud coverage, but that may also make visibility quite hard. So we'll see what race day brings. Now, for my next favorite part of the trail, the steep pines. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that I'm a sucker for pine forests and their beauty, but I'm also a sucker for steep trails and especially loamy ones that can often be found within pine forests. This seems to be fresh cut trail with plenty of exposed root, but traction felt infinite in today's conditions and there's ample opportunity to go fast as long as these conditions persist. Now that we've made our way out of the pines and we're onto this gravel double track, I remind you that we still have at least probably 2,000, maybe even 3,000 feet remaining. Be sure to get the rest in while you can on the gravel double track. If you recall, I named this lower section the Forest of Arm Pump. 
And that's because by the time racers get to this point, they've made their way from the top all the way down here without ever stopping to take a break. Your arms are gonna be juiced up like no other. I feel like it's gonna be hard to even hang onto the handlebars anymore. You're gonna want all the rest that you can get on any straight set of trail that doesn't have a whole bunch of bumps in it. And you're just gonna be waiting for that finish line to finally come. The weather forecast for this week, it's looking a little bit questionable. Some of the rain's been holding off when it originally said it was going to come down, so that's a good sign. We'll see what happens by the time the weekend gets here. After all, it is the Alps and every day is completely subject to change. Mother Nature at its finest, especially in the mountains where the mountains seem to make their own weather. We'll see if that has any effect on qualifying as well as the final race. As we approach the bottom here, I'm pretty sure that racers on race day are gonna have the opportunity to sprint across this bridge, make a right hand turn and sprint for the finish line. It should be a really exciting finish and race day is just a couple of days away. Racers will continue practicing throughout this week followed by qualifying and ultimately the big show, the mega avalanche, the one that everyone gets excited about every single year. Unfortunately, I will not be partaking in the race myself. I just happen to be here here coincidentally at the same time riding the bike park and that's going to be it for today's video so if you enjoyed it be sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and tell me where to ride next